Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart Assign of Black In Again asking you all to hit that uh, share button first. Like and subscribe are optional. Uh, if you did hit them, thank you for the support. But uh, the share button benefits us. Like and subscribe just benefit me. Um, I want to uh, thank any of you who have uh, shared this with anybody else, whoever they are. I'm recording this from Malaysia again. I'm now um, on one of the smaller islands of the country. Um, I'll be here for a few days and uh, just in case any of those former white supremacist uh, cyber vigilantes uh, is still looking, I'm not going to say exactly where, um, but I recorded this one because I wanted to tell you that um, in this nation, and I'm mostly talking to the Muslim men in this case, but men who aren't Muslim can understand what I'm going to what I mean when I refer to, uh, they can make a comparison to the non-Muslim women of the varying neighboring nations. Um, I want to point out that here there is an element of femininity. Um, the Malay people, I'm going to talk about the Malay women, because they're native to this region. They are laid back. The Malay people in general are laid back. Um, the Malay women are feminine and they're responsible, though they're also laid back. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that um, they're not all slim and slim. They come in varying weights. They got varying personalities. However, they are not celebrated for having a dysfunctional personality or having a dysfunctional attitude towards men. There is no, you don't just do stuff like that, just come out with a, an attitude and then other women say, you go. They can find a support for that, but they have to find it online. Therefore, they have to be out of touch with the reality right there in front of their face, physically present in order to have an attitude problem, especially when it comes to men, and then demand certain things from men. Them two don't go together. I wanted you to understand that. This is not uh, a paradise. This is not a place where everything um, everything fits together perfectly and with, with no trials and no tests. That's not it. But this is a nice place to visit. It may very well be a nice place to live as well, depending on what you can do here, what you can find. But you have to keep mind too that while feminism is making its way here it's not too late and you can head it off at the pass I don't mean women's rights I don't mean fair treatment I don't mean gender equity I mean feminism you can head it off at the pass coming here in this region of the world not just the country in which I am right now but brothers you must also keep this in mind we have see here is the flip side so what is the what is the job of the aware the conscious man if he comes here it is to keep this a secret from irresponsible niggas who just want to take and not give that's it because whatever you do in this region of the world is going to justify the reaction that comes afterwards you can come here you can act in such a way that you create no demand for feminism when it shows his head, you smack it. Nobody will say anything to you that you were wrong. They'll say, I understand. You were right. Matter of fact, let me hold this thing down for you while you kick it in the gut. That's how they do it. Let's take turns body slamming this thing. That's how they do it. You, on the other hand, if you come here with that mess, because we men are different from each other. We're pretty evenly distributed across the board, across the spectrum, as far as good, bad, and all the grades in between. But don't tell no trifling nigga, even if he's your brother, your cousin, your favorite cousin for that matter, don't tell no trifling nigga about this region and about how the women will treat you if you treat them well. You come here, you spoil the good ones, and you shun the bad ones. That right there will make enough of a statement. But... You 
see over there in the West, the trifling nigga gets, especially if he's trifling, but he's got a build, or he's trifling, but he's tall, or he's trifling, but other people are scared of him. Uh, then, you know, he gets all the rewards. That happens. But here, it is a bit different. Here, the trifling nigga does not deserve, but he can mess things up for you. Because that's already happened with the Nigerians, not the South Africans, not the Somalis, not the Sudanese who live here. That's happened here with the Nigerians because enough of them were willing to do ignorant nigger stuff. And the rest of them wouldn't disown these ignorant niggers or distance themselves from these ignorant niggers. They talked with the same attitude as the guilty ones. The engineer, the good student, was just as pompous and arrogant and braggadocious as the nigga that was running drugs. Maybe even more so. And they got that reputation. And people will walk away from a Nigerian here and avoid them with a 10-foot pole. It's like that. Not because they're black, but because they're Nigerians. Now, is that fair to the ones that didn't do anything? Obviously not. So we have the option to learn from other people's mistakes here in this region of the world and to prevent them and you see when some Nigerians came here and they found that this was actually a good spot for opportunities and education and if you find a good person you can trust is from here then even to start a business when they, when they learn is they were willing to tell not just the responsible Nigerians back home that just didn't catch a break they were willing to tell the ignorant trifling niggerfied Nigerians the niggerians what was going on and they came and took advantage they don't know about this drug, I can introduce it and the cops are none the wiser. I'm ahead of the curve. They don't know about this camp, I can sit up here and get bank information and then start hitting people's uh, text, uh, hit people up with text messages and get the info and clean out the accounts. They started doing all of this. Everybody now knows it's a Nigerian. So everybody, every Nigerian ain't doing this, but everyone doing it as far as they know is a Nigerian. And that's a stereotype, but that's all they know. That's all the locals know. We have an opportunity to do better here, but we do have to know others' mistakes and avoid them. And that's all I'm trying to say in this thing. Thank you for being patient with me. Do not tell Junebug, Nuck Nuck, Big Trifling, his younger brother, Little Trifling, about this area. If they're acting like this and women are treating them bad, you tell them about some place where the women are more even keel. You tell or don't tell them nothing about nowhere at all. Do not mess this up. I do want to explain this too, though. I mean, this is for the sisters and in for, in the, for the whole pro-black crowd. I'm not going to call you pro-wax. I'm pro-black as well. But I do want to explain this. I'm here with my wife, who's black. These women here are ugly. They're cute. They're in the middle. Average. All They're, they're all over the place. They're pale as hell. Some of them are quite dark and chocolate looking. Nice to look at too. None of them can compete with my wife. But you gotta understand that the reason why we get to have these discussions and the reason why I already know that if my wife decides later I'm not her type and she's out and she ain't my wife no more, that I will be here next is because of how these women acted compared to how sisters acted. That's all it is. It is not about the looks. I am perfectly happy walking around here with my tropical African wife. Hand on her booty and everything. I'm perfectly happy doing that. And the only people that look and stare like something's wrong are the foreigners here. Why this light skin guy married to this woman? They don't even stop to realize how cute she is. I'm proud of her. I'm glad to do it. I was in the pool with her, teaching her to swim earlier. And she made me proud even then. But I want you also to understand that this is not, um, this is not a bash on black women for being black. That's not it. What it is, is that in this region of the world, women actually like black men. I already know if I was dark, I would be stared at more. How do I know? Because I was out there swimming. I got a little bit darker. The longer I've been here, the darker I've gotten, the more open looks I've gotten from women. Now, I was swimming. And about an hour, I'm going to be noticeably darker. And it's going to last for several days. 
and I'm going to be in the pool every day teaching how to swim. And the point I'm making is that these are women here that actually do like brothers when they see them. They don't walk up, say hello, that type of thing, but they do like them. They do. So if you Muslim and you come out here and you look in a marriage, you could tell the mom, have him take a picture of you, and with the many women will see the picture and they on you. They're like, oh, he looking to tie the knot? Okay, fine. Let, let me talk. Let me holler at this guy right quick. Let me talk to him. That's real. That's what's going on here. Same brother. The same brother could be ready to spoil you in the West. And how will he be treated? It's like O'Shea said. And the only thing I want is for people to admit that I said this. So that they can then admit by extension that the people from whom I learned are wise enough to learn from. And that is, I said before, sisters in the West, let other people determine how they're going to judge their own men. Sisters in the West judge a black man by other people's stereotypes, by white supremacist stereotypes of black men. And they judge accordingly. Is he an idness? Is he swagging with his pants sagging and other people are scared of him? If that's the case, then he's black enough and therefore man enough, masculine enough for me. But if not, then he's not man enough. Because how can he be this dark and not be telling jokes all the time or slam dunking a basketball or running a football and intimidating other people or strapping a piece and intimidating other people? Hyper macho, not even hyper masculine, just hyper macho. Nigga. This is not something they do here. Here you don't have to be the stereotype. And as a matter of fact, the stereotype of the African-American Muslim is quite different. It's a positive stereotype and it's part of the appeal. I mean, I've met folks here as a man. And sometimes they're a little afraid because I'm bigger than them. They're just the shy and sweet natured people anyway. But when I speak to them in their language and I ask them what something is and I say, hey, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, I give them or I offer them the fist bump and uh, I say thanks for not laughing at my, my accent when I speak or something like that. They laugh. They lighten up and they become quite friendly and open. And that's because I mean, the first thing they realize, OK, he's Muslim and he's African-American. And, and it just makes everything so much easier. It is easier for us at times to get along with them than it can be for us to get along with people when we go back home to the continent. And I'm not saying that they don't welcome us back home. You're going to get every reaction on the continent. I know that. The welcomes, the neutrality, and the stares. Most people will be neutral. Some will welcome you. Others will want to know why the hell you're there. I understand that. So I'm not saying that Africa doesn't welcome us. I'm saying that you get a more welcome here. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying they can be friendlier to you here for whatever reason. Maybe they just got more time. But all we got to do is not F it up. That's it. And to do that, we got to be ready to take people as they come. We got to be ready to start off nice and then take people however they react to that. And not tell the trife niggas back home about it so they don't come and ruin it. Because them niggas will do it. That's real. The world is the oyster for the responsible brother. All we got to do is leave the trifling homies behind that are always quick to tell us, don't forget your board, man. Don't forget where you came from. Hook me up. Leave that behind and we can do. We can make this work. We can make it happen when it comes to families and businesses and everything else. When it comes to just finding a place where you can use your skill to earn a living honestly and not be treated badly, this is it. This is where you want to be. I hope that what I've said is a benefit. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Blackheart, sign of blackout.